dates I would love to. World. All right, call this meeting to order. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's be here. Join uh, this Commissioner Kirshner. Okay, Heavenly Father, uh, take a breath of air here in a little prayerful mood. Uh, you asked uh, that if we ever knock, the door shall be open. We are knocking and asking for your wisdom in conducting the business of those that we represent. Uh, as we approach Veterans Day, we continue to ask in a special way for you to look over those who are protecting our freedoms and their families. We ask all this through your son. Amen. 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 I'd like to uh, just add a special intention for... Uh, Mary Hepp and her extended family, she passed away 94 years of life well lived and Mary has been engaged civically uh, here and has had her children. So mm -hmm. our thoughts and prayers are with her family. Okay, uh, roll call. Commissioner Thomas? Here. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes, here. Commissioner Kurtz? Here. Minutes, I'll accept a motion to approve the digital audio video recording of the previous board session from Thursday, Halloween. So moved. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Paradisa? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. All right. Administrator's report. Uh, first thing I want to bring up is the week of Thanksgiving. Obviously, Thanksgiving is on a Thursday, so we're not going to be here, so we're not going to have board. Do we want board a different day that week? I don't have anything on the calendar. Yes, I'll make it my book. Yep. So, and it'll be the end of the month for um, bookkeeping, so. Tony, where's your desk calendar? Uh, <laughs> on my desk. <laughs> That's a really great place for it. <laughs> my desk <laughs> over here. <laughs> Brings the full desk in. <laughs> He says that because I have, I have my phone, but then I have this desk the calendar that I walk around with. <laughs> Plus the portable one. Yeah. That's great. Uh, the 26th is good for me. How about you guys? Is that the date we're talking? Tuesday the 26th? 26th is a Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, I can do that. That's not the greatest for me. But... Um, can we move it up? Does it work? Does it work? Can we move it up? Time wise or? Yeah. Nine, you mean nine? Nine. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just probably good to have something in case we need to pass. Yeah. At the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm good at nine. Okay. Well, we can do Wednesday. We can. Tuesday at 9. Tuesday at 9. Tuesday at 9. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other update. Um, a quick update. We have Budget Commission. Uh, they had some discussions on 2019's revenue and um, 2020's revenue. Uh, they didn't uh, certify uh, their revenue. Um, I think they kind of want to hold off until um, the pipeline revenue. They have they have some projections, but I think um, Julie was concerned that uh, the pipelines have until the sixth to appeal. Um, so she, they said that our next meeting they would like to postpone it until December tenth. Um, and that way they could give us a better number, but the number that they gave us as of right now is about 16.8. Um, what we have for this year, what she ended up certifying this year, um, with some adjustments that were made the other day is 17.4. We originally anticipated 17.8. Obviously we had some adjustments with um, the sheriff, so. Just uh, so we're including 300 pipeline money. Uh, yes, I think that's 17 four. Yep, and that the includes that, right? property tax amounts. What she said at the meeting the other day that she was comfortable 
um, doing 300000 for the pipeline money, um, at least until after the 6th when uh, the pipeline has the ability to appeal. So if they appeal, then they pay at the amount they're appealing, and it could be a couple years before that gets... Okay. The big so, delta here is the is jail, you know the revenue at the jail. So I think we need to have <coughs> sit down with the sheriff and invite the judges and and, and find <coughs> out you know what we can act adequately project because that's the, that's six hundred thousand of it. Yeah, and I think you know uh, the, I'm search up there. The promise, first of all, the, the we have revenues through okay. October of uh, fifteen million dollars. I mean, it's easy math at that point. It's a million five a month, right through ten months. There is nothing in the uh, accruals, nothing in the projections that would indicate that we wouldn't continue to do a million five a month. I know we have some adjustments, but usually any adjustments. In fact, every time for the last five years that I've been here, every time there are adjustments in November and December, it is to our benefit, to the county's benefit, because we have accrued some things that we weren't sure of and then we finally put it in. So it's my belief that we will end up closer to 18 million than we do 17.4. As for the pipeline money, you know, you can look at that a couple of different ways. We want to be, we want to wait till they have this chance to appeal and then we would, if the revenue was more, then we would increase it upward. My suggestion is that we think, by all practical reasoning, that the pipeline money will be in the range of 600,000 and we should use that number, and if it is less than that, then we would adjust accordingly before the end of the year. I don't think there's going to be any appeal the first year, the first full year around. So I think waiting until December, what was the day of the next budget meeting? Uh, I think they were asking to reschedule it from the 3rd to the 10th. Yeah, see, I, I think that's just way too close to the end of the year to really give us an opportunity uh, to have any further discussion with the sheriff or whatever. So. My suggestion would be on the 26th, I know we can't call Budget Commission, I get that, but I would like to ask the Budget Commission members to be here on the 26th uh, to have a full discussion and open session regarding that number. Uh, I don't know what you guys think, but that's what, that's what I'm going for. I, I just think December 10th is, you know, with Christmas around the corner is way too late. Well, normally, when do we, in the past, what is a normal uh, deadline to have the budget? Program? We've moved it up. We've accelerated it. This board has to try to get our budgets done by the end of November. By the end of November, by Thanksgiving. So, so that's been our uh, mode of operation. Uh, so, uh, but you know, you can't really budget against no revenue without a revenue number at this point. 16.8, is that what they said? Yep, 16.8. And so the, the difference from this year to next year is just, you know, essentially the 600,000. Yeah. So there's more, it's yeah. more, there's more than the pipeline involved to get it's, to the 16. There, yeah, there's, there's Back a lot. to your jail right. and revenue and. That's right. So maybe we, let's talk about some of the other line items and then try to circle back. But I like Mike's idea of inviting them here on the 26th. But it's important to note, uh, as we review these budgets, and, and I've got to give Stacey Wilson a lot of credit here. She does a lot of work on these things, and yeah. we, we get the result of her work, right? Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that from, from a standpoint of core earnings uh, to core expenses, we have plenty to cover the ongoing operations of the county. That's, that's not, there is no question about that. We have been fortunate over the last few years to have some excess that we could do some additional things that uh, a lack of money wouldn't have allowed us to do. So there is no concern There is no concern here because we've got plenty of money to cover things. It's just a question of how much carryover there'll be. Yeah. And I've asked this question before, but for those listening, you know, this is a discussion about how are we going to end the year and then how are we going to budget for next year? So they do overlap. Yeah. And um, so, uh, is that what, uh, keep going or? Sure. Um, so those are the numbers we got. But can we get something number. scheduled with the sheriff for a budget oh, yeah. hearing? <laughs> yeah. And I, I would like to invite the judges. They obviously handle uh, sentencing. You know, maybe they want to participate, maybe they don't. But I, I, you know, they've worked very well with us 
on all these issues and have been very financially responsible. So I, I think all parties we, were very blessed to have good elected officials that that's watch the, the county revenue. per. So absolutely part of the revenue concern. Can we try to do that for the twenty first? Right? Is that possible? I'll, I'll check their schedules. I know um, Thursdays yeah. are not good for, for judges right. because they have <laughs> been it. So it'll be hard to get the judges in here on a Thursday. So. Yeah, maybe we ought to try to do that for the, the 20th of the, that Wednesday. Mr. Chair, what do you think? I, the ju we know the judges are tied up on Thursdays. Yep. So. Do you want me to check their schedule? Yeah, why don't you do then? that? Let us know. I'm okay the 20th. Tony, how are you? Um, let you know right now. Yeah. I'm okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Check with their schedule and see. Yeah, the only thing I know we have that day is that annexation meeting, possibly. On the, no, I think they scheduled it for the 4th. We're just okay. the 4th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then I just gave you um, drafts of uh, budgets for next year. Um, the one report. It's got the yellow on it. Um, is basically I've given you everything that everybody's actually asked for, um, which you know they always ask for. You know, this is the Christmas they, list. This is the Christmas <laughs> list. So the Christmas list goes to Sam Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Kick in Christmas music. Oh right. We have the lights. Yeah. <laughs> got the lights. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted you to take a look at that. Um, I also printed out just kind of my first attempt to try to, you know, eliminate some of the, uh, I, you know, I don't want to call it fluff, just some of the things that... You can call it fluff. I can call it fluff. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, I like to go through all the reports, look at the history and see where they're at. And um, so those are some of the adjustments. Uh, just my first attempt. I'm still not down to 16.8. Uh, I think my first attempt, at, I'm sitting at about 17.4, about the same budget we did last year. So um, we did do a few more contracts. And uh, obviously with uh, Job and Family Services asking for uh, additional, they had, are only asking for 150. I know they came in earlier this year and indicated they may may need 500,000 right. next year. That's um, cool. They felt comfortable asking 150, and they got some. That's a tribute to the management out there. Yeah. And well, we got to remember too. I mean, I, I, this is a moving target. Sometimes I know you have to you have to budget on you know as close to a probable scenario as possible. Mm -hmm. But we do have significant areas where uh, income is going to drop off. That with a with a couple of breaks, we may have significantly more income uh, if we if we work it properly, right? So. So I just wanted to give you my first first reports, first drafts, and I also gave you an update of where we're at. We're sitting at our expenses, um, eighty point seventeen percent. So, and the report also shows you uh, various years. I went back to 2015, so. But on how much, what percentage is income at? Income is at, uh, income is at 86%, 86.5. So, good. Expenses are at 80, income is at 86. This is a good, good thing to have happen. Yeah. And there'll be some of those expenses, you know, people put it on purchase order, spend what they need to spend, and so a lot of, I, I don't want to say a lot, um, Mary Jane was going to check to see what our normal return on closed purchase orders was going to be. She's going to check that for me. So. The last two years I looked at it, it's been 500000 Right. So. And, and not to forget that we have not, we have not, I don't think, we have not moved any Medicaid money okay. into the operating. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that money is still out there as a cushion. Yep. 600000 855. 855. Okay, so I'll get those meetings scheduled, and if you have any questions or comments, I'll still work. I've got to do the non-general fund budgets yet. I got them in a spreadsheet, but I haven't had a chance to go through them, so there, I'll get those in, and then working on a list of um, the department's capital budgets that they've they've sent in as requests. So I'll have that hopefully next week. The biggest question I have is that you know we had the looming election machines on. Down the horizon for the last three or four years, we accrued for those, we paid for those. <laughs> there is there anything else out there like that that you're aware of that could happen? 
I mean, that was a big. Not one. that. Was, not that big. Okay. At was, least nobody's a, asked or mentioned it. Because that was a pretty big unfunded mandate, right? Yeah. 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 Cover. So that's good. All right. Yeah. yeah. I think that's all I have. I have one thing for you. Sure. Um, there's been a request from the downtown group that as we redesign the health, the joint health district entrance, okay. that uh, we incorporate an anchor for a banner that would go across Washington Street on our side. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of this. Yeah, so it would go across to Simply Susan's, and we'd have. A, uh, a banner that we could they could string downtown okay. for festivals or it's kind events. Of, it's talking about kind of on a pulley system. Yeah. 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 Would that be about yeah. where yeah. the I regional planning board of election door is? Something. About? But could could I just want to ask you to incorporate yeah. that in the architects and engineering yeah. so that at so that we have drawings of that so that it's part of that process. It's got to be taller than the underpass because we don't want to try. That's the early warning if you're going south of York. If you don't get under this, <laughs> that's a good catch, really. Yeah. So while we're just we're doing that, I just want to make sure that we can give, incorporate that in. If you two are all right with that. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 yeah, they've talked about that a while. I'm glad they got it going. Yeah. Good. And they should, they're pretty close at... Um, ready to come in and uh, give us a presentation of some of their drawings, but I will make sure that they add this into it. So. In the scope, yeah. yeah. Add it. And, and do we have one one rendering? Are we multiple, are multiple different ideas? Op, ideas? Yeah. Okay. And of they, the entrance? Yep, of the entrance. And uh, we did get that ABA um, assessment, and I shared that with them too, so that way they could review it in case there was anything um, that they were designing either missed or okay. uh, needed to be added to so they're who's doing that for us um I don't, I don't know. it's not gossip dlz okay dlz and just for everybody's education we own the county service building which is the old for fifth third building and well, well, AEP, sell, sell. Sell. Well, <laughs> the gift shop, and uh, Schwabley Hardware. If you really want to, go <laughs> yeah, yeah there was a theater there at one point, uh, and it's a joint health district, so it's county, township, cities. We house them. Uh, they pay us uh, common access charges there. Uh, their entrance, which kind of looks like an employee entrance, which faces north. Uh, is ADA it, it is accessible but not by ADA standards and that wall actually predates the Civil War predates the building uh, the building that was there burnt down and they built a building against that wall so after 150 years that that wall has fulfilled its service and the plaster started to peel so we are looking for a design that makes it looks like like an entrance uh, and possibly as something that we can use uh, to apply for state capital funds to match and close with that. So that's that's the back story on that for those who haven't followed that story. Okay, other commissioners? Oh, just a thought. So after we get the final design, then we get it down to Mike Ditto, right? Yep. Yeah. You'll do that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Report, uh, a few things. Um, I see a few faces in the room that were down at the Board of Elections uh, Tuesday night. Um, they had a few uh, hiccups, but overall I think I think it went real well. So I want to commend the Board of Elections for all the hard work. They prepared, they prepared, they prepared. Um, we had 34 precincts set up, if I understand that right. Yeah, and, well, Jimmy uh, took care of one of the precincts. Jimmy right? worked. Uh, <coughs> And um, there were a few of them that had some issues. The phones were ringing. I could feel a little tension in the room. But, but all in all, they did a pretty good job. Uh, we have a couple veteran issues or veteran events this week. Uh, Mike Schreiner was in here about a month ago. Uh, it's the third annual salute to our veterans. It'll be out at Meadowbrook Park uh, this Friday. Doors open at 530. Uh, it'll be a, be a great event, country theme. Eric Sowers is playing. Proceeds will go back to local uh, veteran groups. Uh, so, one of the, and then just a reminder, uh, 
that uh, Jim Roberts' dedication will be Sunday, this Sunday at 1 o'clock down at the um, gazebo on Frost Parkway. And uh, Veterans Day will be Monday. I thank our veterans. Yeah, for sure. Is there right. a service on um, Saturday? Pardon me? For Veteran of the Year? Yeah. On Saturday. Thank you. Veteran of the Year will be yeah, Saturday or Friday night. Um, it's Saturday night. I think it was initially it put on our calendars Friday, but it is Saturday. Oh, it is oh. Saturday. Oh, okay. Yes. They changed it. Sorry. Um, All right. And that's in, I think that's in uh, Bettsville. Mm -hmm. Five o'clock, Charlene, at 5.30. Um, 5.30 is social. Yeah, no, social is 5.30, following by dinner at 6.30. Yeah, uh, that, that's not at Bettsville. Bettsville. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, in Bettsville. Bettsville. Yes. What choice is it to? Yeah, they moved it this okay. year for reasons. Friday, thirty, unveiled. And announced. Saturday. Oh, yes. I, that's good on there. my schedule. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 It was yes, actually it's Saturday, Saturday night scheduled for, for Friday. And it's uh, Saturday. Okay. Saturday. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. All right. So I, I, uh, I'm cool. I stand corrected. Sorry about that. So, yeah. Saturday. Yep. so it is Saturday. 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 They're both Saturday. So the Meadowbrook event is Saturday, not Friday. Oh. This Meadowbrook event? We're all screwed up. And, yeah, November 9th. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you for the correction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That one isn't on our calendar. I can't. For the meeting on our calendar, we <laughs> we had it backwards. Yeah. That's okay. And like some Saturdays, there's nothing. Thank this Saturday is like So Saturday night, yeah. 530 right. is a Veteran Council Annual Dinner in Bettsville. <laughs> and at... Uh, same time or seven o'clock is the uh, Meadowbrook event. Sorry, stand corrected. Saturday night. Okay. All right. Thanks sure. I got a couple of things. Yesterday was a busy day. All three of us were in Columbus, along with a couple other folks in the room here. And uh, we do have a House bill number on Mr. Reinick. He's Representative Reinick's referendum, and it is House Bill 401. Uh, and that bill has gone to uh, the committee. Uh, to be presented. So uh, I have the full bill here um, that we printed off this morning. Uh, so I'd like somewhere along the way to, to pass a resolution supporting Bill's efforts to uh, uh, to get this passed. It's a uh, Senate, it's uh, again House Bill 401, and I'm not sure if it's been assigned a Senate number yet, but it will. Did we pass the res? I thought we did. We pass the resolution supporting. I know we sent a letter. I don't know. <coughs> yeah, I, I don't know. If we did. I just since the bill is in full form, I was going to incorporate. Okay. This as part of the documentation for the meeting and say okay. this is indeed what we what it is that we uh, support. Can we do that now or next meeting? Uh, next meeting is fine. I just wanted to make I give everybody a chance to read through it. Uh, the uh, uh, talking about Christmas lights a minute. The Christmas lighting ceremony is December 6th at 5.15 on the Justice Center lawn. We hope to have some live coverage of that. We hope to have everything up and ready to light at that point. Uh, if we don't, it's Audrey's fault. <laughs> <laughs> just, just get that on record and make sure everybody does that. Yeah. The 6th at 5.15? The 6th at 5.15, yes. And that is really... Uh, That's Friday. That's yeah. really all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. I, I, did you did you receive this? Did you look get a chance to look at this? Yeah, I haven't had a chance to talk. Okay. To, did we'll you talk, talk to Derek? I did. That? I did. We're there talking was, about a resolution. Yeah, there was some. Yeah, there were concerns. That there's some ambiguity as, as it relates to S power. So, uh, yeah, I, get, I, I don't want to. I want you to have a chance to absorb it all. Yeah. Know? Yeah, I just haven't. We'll talk about about it. Derek about it. I'll put this on the agenda for next uh, next week then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and basically, it was a question from Lydia Mahalik it, because she she said it was a little bit, we're going to go talk to her because they're the folks that actually You're approved right. the pilot, right? Yeah. So uh, we want to make sure that we're not being ambiguous and very clear. Ooh, and what we're talking about is we sunset the AZ as of June 30th <coughs> and um, in our sunset language, there was a specific call out if somebody had to refile underneath the uh, Ohio Power Siding Board process that there wouldn't be an AZ available to them. And so there's some question about that. Not in our minds, our minds is that it's such sunset, but from the legality standpoint. So we're trying to clear that up. That's what, that's what I have. All right. 
Good. Charlene, are you going to go over uh, at the end of the meeting comp plan and the schedule for that? I sure can. Okay. All right. We have a land bank update. We do. So let's do that. Hey. All right. You need. Okay. Here's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We have a land bank update. The first time Lexus has been in our meeting. Set up a mode of zone. Serious here. Virtual, virtual reality. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> they're Jack. actually using her in one of those at yes. a crime now to try to get something to solve. Did you do that? Uh, Is that right? Yes. Somebody claimed that uh, he didn't stab his wife, she stabbed herself. And supposedly Siri was on, or Alexa was on, and she's going to now testify. Oh, wow. So, oh, cool. what? so that'll be interesting, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mr. Okay, Harris. well, thank you for allowing me a little bit of time to give you an update on the land bank. Um, as most of you might be aware or may not be, I didn't start as the treasurer until February 25th of this year. And at that point, um, the land bank had already demolished uh, 40 houses at a cost of a a little over $500,000. However, 300,000 of that 500,000 was a result of the commissioners advancing 300,000 to the land bank so that they had money to operate with because the way the grant works was the way the grant was supposed to work was that you demolish the structure, then you apply to the state for a reimbursement, you got that money back and then you could demolish another house. Um, unfortunately, um, that wasn't working in our office and um, our bank balance as of well shortly after February 25th we were down to four thousand six hundred dollars in our bank account and there weren't any funds available even after we spent your three hundred thousand um, to do any additional uh, demolitions so um, where are we today well obviously Today I've got a check to present to the commissioners to pay back the advance of $300,000 that was promised last year by my predecessor. Thank you very much, Damon, for that. <laughs> and um, besides that, we have about $279,000 left in our checking account to do additional demolitions. So financially we're setting much better. So I see Guido came out and saw you about repaying us. Yeah, I had that. <laughs> <laughs> this, this coming from an old bank club. <laughs> Actually, uh, you right? bunch of Italian guys up here. It was, you know? <laughs> it was Jimmy. Jimmy was the one that did it. <laughs> so um, just to give you some uh, statistics here, the average cost to demolish, and to demolish one house that's tear it down, do all the environmental stuff, and tear the house down, clean it up, reseed it. It's about, we've been averaging about $13,482 per house. <coughs> so that $300,000 that commissioners advanced to us was uh, responsible for uh, 22 of the 40 properties that were demolished. So it was, a, it was a big, it was a big thing. And of course, you know, it's small, but I think we need to add to that the economic impact to the county. We had additional payroll taxes. We had increased purchases of the employees that were in, while they were in towns doing their work. Gas tax for transportation for the contractors. But most important, we eliminated a lot of slum and blight that existed in the county prior to this. In addition, we've sold five houses for rehabilitation. And those houses are, I think, three or four of those are completed. The fifth one will be soon. And the importance of that is that instead of demolishing a house and ending up with a vacant lot that pays a lot less tax, obviously, than a, a property with a house on it, those five properties will be returned to a tax paying status for the county, and that's good. Um, and, and the other advantage is that by selling these homes the way we did, it afforded the opportunity to people that probably wouldn't have been able to afford otherwise to purchase a house and get <clears> it in, in the condition that it's in. So it's, a, it's been a win-win for everybody. So what's the future of the land bank? Um, in essence, the grant has ended. It will end by the end of the year, but we're, we can't do any more demolitions. We did do 10 additional demolitions um, on top of the 40 this fall. Uh, we still have 17 properties that's in the land bank's name 
that we have to demolish and we also have an additional property that could possibly go uh, for a rehab. So uh, we're alive and well. I'm looking forward to a very successful year in 2020. And with that, I would like to one-handedly present <laughs> <laughs> this check, the $300,000 to whoever, right. whatever. That's your mic. Up, yeah. yep. Good. Wow. The big check. If this thing bounces, it'll hurt somebody. <laughs> <laughs> this check will bounce. So the right. studio will be back. Make sure Stacy you know, gets it. Actually, I have, I have a better Thank check. You. It's Thank not made of wood. It won't bounce. Well, I, go ahead. There you go. I just want, I just, uh, thank you very much, Paul. Yep. I, but job, I also Paul. want to give a shout out to Renee Smith. Yes. Uh, from, uh, Foster Economic Development, who's been administrating this program uh, for the last couple, maybe more than a couple of years. And to those folks who uh, initially formed the land bank and did, you know, a lot of the heavy lifting in the beginning, things are, thanks to Paul, getting smoother because uh, there are a lot of decisions to be made on a number of different areas. But as Paul said, we have eliminated some blight and we have given some folks who may not have otherwise been able to own a house the opportunity to do that. So. It's all good stuff, and uh, we'll continue working hard on that. And even though we don't have another allotment for 2020, we're keeping our fingers crossed that we may, and it may be a significant amount of money again, and we can uh, work real hard then on uh, kind of the secondary areas. I think that we covered most of the stuff that was real obvious, but there's some stuff out in the county and in the city of Tiffin that uh, probably could use some more attention. Not probably, could use some more attention. Yeah, and this is absolutely a collaborative project. I mean, the auditor, Julie Adkins involved, Derek Devine, the prosecutor, treasurer, Damon, now Paul, uh, FDDC, you mentioned the city mayors, uh, and you know, the commissioners obviously participate as well. We've had, so, the, we've had the villages, uh, the village. you talk to the land bank, yep. uh, most, many of them, uh, shades through uh, the project that we didn't think we could get done in Attica. The old Eagles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's now you know beautiful space. Uh, be a that, veterans memorial. But mm -hmm. I mean that was a real collaboration because that was not only uh, land bank funds, but it was private funds. Sutton Bank stepped up, so that was a that was a real good situation. And and I would submit because I've talked to commissioners from other counties that aren't even doing land banks because they don't have that level of collaboration. So having that level of collaborations allowed us to realize you know, half a million dollars or more in outside grant money. So kudos to all those folks. Yeah, as Paul says, a half million dollars really has a multiple effect because you are employing people and you are now starting to generate new taxes that weren't going to be there. Yeah, so the Paul, enhancement of the value of that property next to the property they had tore down. Right, yeah. That's a right. big deal. Yeah. So it looks like you have enough cash to do the 17 in the spring. You did the math, didn't you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is for everybody. <laughs> I, they got an app for your phone. I did not use my phone. I'm afraid this thing will talk to me. So we're going to proceed with We it. will go ahead. Whether we get reimbursed by the state through a grant program or not, we have the funds that we can tear down those buildings. Plus, the land bank does receive 5% 5, 5 every year of the DRETAC funds, which amounts to around, I think, $90,000. So, right. so we'll continue to be funding the land bank through DRETAC. Um, the real estate, the delinquent real estate, DRE oh. um, taxes. So um, I think we can see the program continue, only it won't be on the reimbursement basis that we had before. So, so there is some advantage that people do get delinquent on our taxes? There is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was asked that question yesterday because Roseanne, one of my employees, has been trying to go after some of those because there hasn't been time in the past. And she says, how long do you want me to do this? You know, I, I just realized that if we get these cleaned up, there's not going to be as much delinquent money. And I said, yeah, that's, that's a problem, but that's a good problem. <laughs> so it's always going to be a problem. Yeah. Good. 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 All right. Thank you. Uh, that's all good news. Uh, old business. New business. Hey, we just have a couple. Did we surprise you? Yes, we did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, I don't have any paper resolutions. So um, I have two supplemental appropriations. One is at the request of 
uh, come in please too. It's for the um, Justice Reinvestment and Incentive Grant Fund, uh, asking for $22,740 into their contract service line. And then I have a request from the Treasurer's Office um, for $3,000 into his DreeTac uh, supply line. And those are the only two I have. I uh, move for approval. So moved. Uh, any discussion? Roll call. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, we have a brief executive <laughs> session, but we're going to push that to the end if that's okay. It's just going to take a minute. It's about pending litigation. Uh, public comments. Charlene. So uh, I'll go. Like Commissioner Thomas had said, we are getting ready to do the public input sessions for the comprehensive plan. Um, we are rounding the corner towards finalizing the joint comprehensive plan between the county, uh, City of Tippin, City of Fostoria, and the Park District. The first meeting of two will be held on November 20th at the NCOESC at 6 p.m. Um, everybody's welcome. Uh, business owners, landowners, citizens, constituents, elected officials, please come. It's your chance to give us your input on the final uh, strategies and objectives for the plan. Um, the same exact meeting is going to be held again the next night on the 21st in Fostoria at 5 p.m at the Fostoria Learning Center. And again, you're all invited to come. Uh, we don't ask you to be at both. That's not necessary because you're just gonna hear the same thing at both. <laughs> so this is to make it available to both sides of the county. And the easiest way we can do it is put them to two separate locations. Is the draft available to the public anywhere at this point? It is not. It's gonna be a presentation. Okay. Um, and just to get input on objectives and priorities. <laughs> Uh, the draft is at the committee level, a public records request, you can ask for it, and we always give you what No, I didn't know if it was know. posted somewhere. So our plan is to have public input sessions. Mm -hmm. They're going to make a presentation of where we've journeyed and where we've arrived, mm -hmm. and then there's one more chance to this for public is, input at these, at these meetings. This is the last chance for public input. Okay. The Got 20th it. and 21st. So a little bit of a timeline from where we are right now to where we're going. Um, the steering committee for the comprehensive plan is meeting on November 13th. That is a public meeting just because of the simple fact that, you know, you can't have more than so many elected officials without being a public meeting. So, but it will be a public meeting for observation only. Um, no comment will be accepted except from steering committee members. We're going to be announcing that by Friday. Um, then. At that meeting, the elected officials and those who are part of the steering committee are expected to have read through the draft plan um, that we've received, have their edits, as well as they have a lot of homework to do. Um, this isn't a light meeting. You can ask any of the three commissioners and Stacy. They've received the file. It's not small. Um, we will then have that meeting go through it. Uh, CT consultants will add the edits, and they will add the homework information, and then it will go to the public for review after that. In December we will receive a final draft and it better be to my standards um, at that point and then it will go out to all partners and steering committee members for review January we will be asking for approval and February we will be asking for implementation so great that's where we stand Thanks. I do have a it, it, it's called a comment I'm fairly I'm new everyone out there understands this but you can only use this for so long <laughs> I'm still using it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I still use it too, Tony, so it's all right. Well, I, uh, I have a, there's a lot of work that's come into conclusion. So mm -hmm. you have the comprehensive plan that you just referred to. Correct. We have a transportation plan that's about ready to be Correct. finalized. We have the county's plan mm -hmm. that's about ready to be finalized. Early next year at the latest, would mm -hmm. you agree? So, uh, I think it would be good once those are completed that we make it easy for the public to access them. 
So that's a great comment and the follow up to that would be that regional planning is your planning authority for Seneca County. Um, we have we house all the plans, we publish the plans, we maintain great, the plans. Great website, by the way. Thank you. So yeah, they yeah, will be website. available on our website, um, and we will market that. Um, we will not, we will print them, but they will be a <coughs> cost if you want to come and get a printed copy of the plan because they're not small. Um, the thing you have to remember is with our building management plan, that also will have all the blueprints for our buildings. Um, that's an appendice, so that will be there. Um, there are a couple buildings that are excluded due to security reasons, so we may let those elected officials maintain those. But all plans will be published on our website to the extent that the EMA is working on their hazard mitigation plan, yep. and their plan will be published on our website as well. Um, it, it's a matter of making sure all plans are able to be found in one place. Regional planning is your planning authority, so you'll be able to find Thank them there. Good. Okay. Yep. okay, public comments. Wolf. Okay. Uh, Logan Wolf, Fostoria. Um, got just a couple comments with regard to Sunny Farms Landfill. Um, in recent meetings, uh, landfill representatives have been passing out uh, sulfur dioxide fact sheets. Uh, they've been saying that the issue with regard to sulfur dioxide isn't exactly significant. I'd say that's not the case as they continue to be above the emission standards at the state and federal level. and. Even with special state permissions, they're still not operating with a PSD permit. And uh, in their fact sheet, they said that they're in compliance with the National Ambient Air Quality Standards, but they're basing that information off of just a few individual EPA testings. Uh, when people called and complained, they came out either later in the day or the next day, wind direction had changed. Uh, they don't have any permanent meters for sulfur dioxide to uh, establish that information. Uh, they base part of this information on theoretical computer models rather than actual testing and data. And uh, another thing I want to mention is starting in August, they stopped running the second flare. Uh, which I imagine is possibly to get those sulfur dioxide numbers down, but the trade-off for that is again hydrogen sulfide levels come back, back up, people are starting to smell it again, starting to call the complaint line, uh, looking at their gas collection sampling reports, which, which is a monthly thing. Uh, they have to log all the downtime for the flares. They have detailed uh, downtime logs for the first flare, <coughs> but for the second flare, they just say 92% downtime, they don't have any explanation or information with regard to that. So that's, that's information I'd like to know. So, um, I'd also like to see permanent meters for sulfur dioxide established, but that's something that I guess was the EPA's responsibility and they still haven't gotten around to doing that. So those are my comments. Yeah. <clears throat> I just uh, wanted to share something that happened to me last weekend. I was sitting uh, at the theater and a fifth grader came up to me and sat down next to me and she said Shane I understand you're a commissioner I'm like yeah she goes how do you feel about the dump <laughs> <laughs> she goes I live out by New Regal and I live kind of close to the dump and I want to know how you feel about it and I said well I want them to fix their problems and she goes I wake up every morning and it stinks how does that make you feel? And I said, it makes me mad. And so I said, the next opportunity I get, I'm going to say that. So. All right. Uh, other public comments? <coughs> Mr. Heiser. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> All right, Nick. Great. Make sure we get a chance to talk again. I appreciate that. I did see that article in the paper about the uh, trip to Columbus. I think that is great. Power to the people, it says in the paper. What that did was gave local control, more control to the residents. Bill Reinecke's quote in there. That's awesome. More local control to the residents. That's great. That's good job. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Um, so moving on here, uh, has anybody looked at the House Bill 592 that I talked about for the last couple months? I have not. Yeah, I've said it at every meeting for the last 
couple months that I've been to. House Bill 592, uh, that was established a long time ago. Um, that bill is already in place. Don't have to uh, get organized to get that bill to the House. It's already in place. Right. That, You're saying it's passed? In the 80s, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, gave local control to protect the citizens and gave them public input when decisions are being made in regards to host agreement or uh, any fee issue adjustments on that host agreement. There has to be hearings, public input. There's... Uh, I think that bill also allowed our local authorities to appoint people to those boards. Uh, that would be good. I think that I think it's within that bill from what I remember reading. It's been a while ago, but yeah. 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 I think that's where we get the authority to, to appoint a citizen, an interested citizen to uh, to policy board. And then I think they're supposed to advertise in the paper every day for two weeks and yeah. in thirty days they have a certain amount of hearings to do any kind of uh, host agreement change, amendment, fee uh, fee settlement, so to speak. So I went back and looked in the Review Times, which is you know, Fostoria, which is where the landfill sits in the mailing address. And uh, I went the whole month of July, and I know that special meeting was July 18th, but the whole month of July, I didn't see one public uh, notice about this hearing uh, or this meeting. Now, I've seen the commissioner's meetings and reports there, they're there all the time, which is great. You know, like people like to see that. But I did not see one uh, public notice about any kind of a special meeting. So nobody knew about this special meeting that happened on July 18th when that settlement happened and you approved the amendment in that host agreement. We did not know. Nobody knew, but somehow all three Sunny Farms officials were there. And I just want to know how they knew if it wasn't public. Maybe were they invited or... Uh, What's the time frame of Tim leaving and... Yeah, Tim was there that day. He was in the minutes. I have the minutes I'm right just, here. Yeah, I wonder because he would know that. He would that was a policy probably. committee meeting. No, that was a that was OSS a, board. OSS board. Okay. Yep. Where they made that was on July 18th. What What did the board pass at that at that meeting? The the settlement for the amended host agreement. The amended the host agreement. Oh, okay. Well, it was happened? unanimously passed. Was that, that that I don't know that that was a special meeting. Was well, it, was it wasn't a regular meeting. Health department meeting? No, no, no. We, solid waste. I think we probably. We, I think. I think it wasn't a regular meeting, but I think that well, the date was changed to coincide with when they had should. a meeting before. It said special meeting yeah, in the paper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. said special meeting. I got the report right here. Well, it was we went into executive session to talk about uh, uh, the status of Sunny Farms, along with legal counsel Alvin Bauer at two o eight p.m. Huh. And. Uh, you made, a, you made a motion, oh no, I'm sorry. Commissioner Kirshner made a motion to end executive session. They came out and then they voted on the settlement issue and the amended host agreement, which basically, in your opinion, gave you guys more money. Well, factual, you know, you told me last, I think time or two I was here that, you know, realized that it gave you more money. Well, I'm glad of that. But what that did was that circumvented all the public. We had no input, which is required by House Bill 592. Um, I reached out to the Solid Waste District again, and she said, she hasn't got back to me. I asked to be on the next agenda, because she's limited me to three minutes. She's sitting there cutting me off, you know, trying to cut me off at the last meeting. None of you were there for the she policy committee. The, the oh yeah, meeting. and yeah. that last meeting, she denied me access to go, that public. And then I reached out to you folks, and yeah. we got that issue fixed yeah. because oh, she we was did go. We just left before. You did. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You were there first. Yep. And but all the things that happened after it, the Solid Waste District uh, director said, <laughs> on the record, we don't have any money in the budget for advertisements in the paper. <laughs> and then the other commissioner said, uh, he goes, well, we don't have to advertise special meetings, on the record. We don't have to advertise special meetings. Yeah. And I'm thinking, this, this, isn't, this isn't fair, okay? Wait a minute. Mike, go, Mike. Ahead. go ahead. Well, that was a board, that was a policy committee meeting. This right? last one was, yes. So who said that they don't have to publish public meetings? The OSS board or the policy committee? The board? commissioner from 
Sandusky. Sandusky County said that. That's Scott. Yeah. So the, 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 we didn't have to notify have, the yes, public. Okay. That is correct. For for policy committee meetings or for OSS meetings. For well, special board meetings. Yes. Really. I I don't understand that to be true. The, our yeah. you know our our recommendation to them was especially on this policy deal as we were having this conversation that it's a public meeting and it should be notified <coughs> accordingly and should follow all tenets of the Sunshine Law. That's where we're at. You know, yeah, I, I would yeah. really want to talk to Scott before to understand what his reason is. All. Please have her reach out to uh, Kathleen. Have her call me. Get back. I emailed her. I called her. I get nothing. And I just want to be That's on board right. so I'm not cut off so I can have a chance to talk and I'm not rushed through you know, my comments. And Speak of that, your time's up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, and by the way, I was looking through those papers at the library, and right front page says Sunny Farms violated uh, sulfur dioxide levels. This case is now re <coughs> referred to the Attorney General. So there's right in the paper that it says that. What was the date of that? Uh, it was in July. It was before the July 18th meeting. Now, that, that July 18th special <laughs> meeting had to happen because the next day they voted on the renewal of the license at the health department. Now, there's a reason why they said, hey, let's hurry up and do this. Let's get this done because now when they did that settlement, now they're in substantial compliance because the health department attorney says, well, they don't have to renew their license if they're not in substantial compliance, meaning that $3 million that they owed was out there hanging over their head. That's not substantial compliance. So they had to get this done. I, I'm... I'm not sure that conflating what's happening at the OSS and that settlement impacted the health department because it put them in substantial compliance. I, I, I'm the not sure. I, I think they're they're separate issues. There's a health and welfare issue that is dealt with at the health board. I'm not. I don't, I'm not debating. I you know I'm not sure that the is, issue with OSS was impacting the health department. Well, I had several but meetings. For us, it was important to get that resolved because of the, the, the lack of funding, <clears throat> the, the classification controversy that was happening with the EPA. Those, that was important for us to resolve. The lack of funding, meaning the OSS, is essentially a captured agency because they heavily require yeah, on those funds. And that I don't was think that's a fair class characterization. Tim Wasserman told me that they would not sustain if that, that's they didn't fair. have the landfill. That's fair. But the, uh, you know, to, to say that somehow it, there's a correlation between our actions and the things that are happening in the landfill isn't fair. Because, there, you know, we share all of your concerns as it relates to the landfill from health and welfare. We have a fiduciary obligation to ensure that solid waste district is solvent at the expense of the residents here no no it's not that's it's not not a fair characteristic okay well okay. i have a direct correlation between the amended host agreement and the renewal of the health department's license sunny farm now this i had meeting with their attorney the health department's attorney and we've talked and beth was there or was there we were all there and he said, if that settlement's out there, they're not in substantial compliance. And that gives them grounds yeah, to deny the license. I, I do. I don't know that to be true. I, I know that to be true. And it's on the record. And there's, there's facts to support that. Yeah, I just don't know that to be true. And that, that's fine. That's fair. You weren't, you, none of you guys were there. Which, you weren't invited. I mean, it, it was just between us. So I'm not you know, faulting you for anything like that. But uh, we've been at this thing for over a year now. And we've been begging for a change in the host agreement. I mean, all the time I talk about the host agreement and for nobody to put the notice in the paper that says, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna amend this host agreement on July 18th at this special meeting and commissioner uh, from Sandusky County says, well, we don't have to advertise special meetings. So you go in to this special meeting that nobody knows about except the three individuals from Sunny Farms who must have been invited to go 
because how else would they know if it wasn't public notice? Uh, and you amend that thing, and we're sitting here begging to have input into the host agreement, and we were totally bypassed. Everyone feels like we, won't, we were not being taken seriously. I mean, the wind people, man, we're doing all this stuff for them, and I love those guys. I mean, they're, they're great. But we want the same respect. I mean, giving local control. That's what that bill was. And the, want to control what happens in these residents' backyard. That's what he's, that's the paper, that was a quote in today's paper. Why can't we have the same thing? I mean, I don't understand. I feel like you guys aren't listening. And I feel like we have to jump up and down all the time to get our points across. <laughs> Do you think that's fair? I mean... And, and I gotta say, as it relates to the, the, the settlement, we were following our attorney's advice on that. So and they, I, I, you know, and, and maybe this is a false assumption, but uh, the OSS board follows the sunshine law and has an advance notice. If it didn't happen, I would be surprised, but it should have. I wish somebody would show me in the paper that it was in advertising. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't well, I, I don't know. I don't I don't know the answer to that because, you know, like our meeting today, I came into it, I assumed that, you know, it was notified because everybody in our office knows that we have to give 24-hour advance notice of a public meeting and we're very, we actually aspire to 48 hours uh, and typically I think we have our four press release out. It's in there every week. Yeah, yeah. No. So, but Albin Bauer, we've had this conversation. He represents the solid waste district and correct. and everything that that they do that he wouldn't have a job if if the landfill wasn't there. I mean, essentially, that agency would never run because they need the money from the landfill to operate that thing. So, everybody just, just to be very clear on that. There are other avenues for funding if the solid waste district would choose to go that direction. Tim told me they'd have to shut the doors, those yeah. exact words. No, there are, there are other, it is a taxing authority it could tax. Okay. So, I mean, we're not interested in <laughs> doing that, to be very clear, Vicki. <laughs> but it, 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 you can levy a tax for solid waste management. So, yeah, well, it doesn't change. I'm just making sure that the yeah, record is clear. Right, I'm not just, changing your, I'm not undermining your position. I'm just making sure that the record's clear. I feel your frustration, but two points need to be made. There are some things that you do as a member of the Solid Waste Board that may be uh, opposite or in conflict with what we're doing as commissioners uh, for the county. Uh, you know, we've had that discussion over there. We're, we sometimes, we can't approve things Solid Waste wants to do because it's not, a, in our opinion, in the best interests of those we represent. So why are we in the joint agreement? Well, we had talked on occasion about once out, at the meeting. You know, yeah. Well, I was there. You know, well, we've had. I mean, we had a lot of sidebar discussions. I believe it was brought up. I'm sorry. And, no, and the second I thing apologize. is that when it comes to have, allowing for a referendum as it relates to the win, this was a process that citizens brought to Representative Reinke. We're not a lawmaking body here. Okay. Uh, we are more an executive body. I, mean, I guess it looks this, like it in a paper then. Yeah, we're, we're not, we, I mean, we certainly can uh, endorse it. We certainly can ask him to move forward with it, but we can't actually legislate. So, uh, you know, it has to be a ground That's floor. a fair point. Now, in that joint agreement, you said, I, when you went in there, you said, uh, you know, we're bringing that up about bailing from the joint agreement. And then I think you brought it up also, but by the time that meeting was over, you said, well, just take this off the table then. Take that off the table because the other commissioners were getting upset, but we shouldn't consider them getting upset. We need to consider what's best for our county. And if that agency cannot fund itself, that is reason enough to leave that joint agreement. And I would be interested to know if anybody looked into if there's special we did, circumstances. Yeah, we did our which, legal due diligence on that, Nate, and it, you know, it's not just... Uh, packing our bags and going. It takes a vote to disband a, a, a political subdivision because it is a, a three county political subdivision. So we would need a majority vote uh, of that board as a legal matter <coughs> to disband it. And 
you know, I don't see the incentive for the other six commissioners to allow us. Well, at least we could bring it up to a vote. Well, the case in point, though, was along with what Commissioner Thomas said, we also did some research as to the cost of Seneca County in order to form our own district. And I mean, it was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars just to be able to do it. Uh, from a standpoint of legal fees, from the standpoint of reforming the board, from the standpoint of having to deal with the solid waste uh, folk with, the, with Sunny Hill, uh, from all those things, I mean, it was estimated to be in the hundreds of thousands, a couple, three hundred thousand dollars. So that's where, as I said earlier, case in point, sometimes what we do on OSS conflicts with, you know, what our what our job is to do here as commissioners. One, two, three hundred thousand, four, five, six hundred thousand. Who cares what it takes to set up locally? That gives you more control of what happens. You don't have to rely on the six other commissioners. I mean, that makes total sense. You're going to get, Ms. Paradiso, so you would know, I mean, you're going to get more money that way. If you had your own solid, uh, own, you bail from the joint agreement and have your own, you're going to get a lot more money, and that's going to be offset. I mean, that's going to be chump change to what you're going to get. I mean, financially, it makes sense. And I think this and, agreement has been in place for 25 years. Uh, so it, it, it predates us substantially. So we it's, in a, it's a legal subdivision that we inherited. I just I mean, so everybody's clear. Right. It, doesn't matter. Yeah, it wasn't like it was something that we dreamt up a year ago. Well, it goes it's back to the time that the dump was actually an auto county. Right? It was an auto county. Oh, yeah, there was a time when the dump was in Ottawa County, and we were part of it, so we benefited, right? Yeah, and that's exactly what the commissioner said. Well, we took the brunt of this. Well, you didn't bring in 95% from out-of-state waste all the time. Yeah, you did. Yeah, they shut it down. Yeah. But, I mean, you know. And what happens when this gets full? Shut down. They're going to have a new dump, unless they get some kind of expansion. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I'm happy to let you finish up but you know we've been on it for I, I would really uh, uh next week when i come back you know I, I i would like you know maybe some input on what you guys think on house bill 592 okay. and then maybe yeah. check with some of the uh commissioners and say why was there no public input in this thing this amendment and why was there a special invite to sunny farms to be there yeah i don't know any of that to be true but I, well, I, there's no evidence to support otherwise. Yeah, I'll, I'll look mine. into it. Uh, my only, my understanding of the Sunshine Law, this is this is the only possible thing that I think maybe if it was a regularly scheduled meeting, it's possible they sent out meeting really meeting notices at the beginning of the year for every meeting that was supposed to happen throughout the year. I'm not sure if this is what they were doing, but it could have been something that went in the paper in January and then said, we're going to meet on these dates, and it could have been one of those dates. That's the only thing I could think of. If not, there should have been a, a meeting release out, or a meeting yeah. notice out at least 24 hours ahead of it. So I, I, look I into that. I tell you, there was no malice in it. I mean, there was it wasn't an intention. That's what it looks like, though. Yeah, it I looks just, like I'm we were back door. At least from our... Our standpoint, you know, we might find articles that said it after the transparent. Well, I supported Nate. That it, it's exacerbated by the fact that he called over and said, "Can I speak?" And the answer was, "You can't even come." Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I mean, that is call there. That kind Same of call. It, it, it makes it look suspicious. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't this is perfect. Thanks, Nate. And, and Tim, you know, you just let me talk, and he never went. Cut him off! Cut him off! <laughs> like she did to me at the policy committee but, meeting. But I mean, let's get serious. Three minutes here. is the yeah, it's a guy. Yeah, that, and I asked to be on the agenda, and she said no. And I asked to be on the next agenda, I never got nothing back. So I'm not getting anywhere with her because I mean, obviously, she just doesn't know. Her idea of public notice is putting a, do a note on the front door of the <laughs> office and said, "Here's the public notice." That's what she told me. <laughs> so right. this whole thing Thanks. stinks. Thank you. Yeah, literally. <laughs> All right, other public comments? Yes, sir. State your name. And sure. My name is Brian Ezek. I represent the Sunny Farms Landfill. Um, one of our objectives in being a member of the community is to inform the community and combat misinformation whenever it, whenever it rises up. Um, to that end, we had a, a phenomenal open house on October 12th. Had over 200 people there, an opportunity for folks to engage with, this, with us. There were members of the county there. Um, it's really a good event. To, and every time I've spoken to the opposition groups, I've invited them out every single time I've spoken to them. Um, it's important because there's a lot of complicated issues associated with the landfill. Um, collecting the landfill gas is critically important. Collecting that gas does lead to sulfur dioxide emissions. Uh, 
those emissions are significant. They're so significant that we've, you know, we've got an agreement with the Attorney General that, that explains how we are going to comply with the regulations and not have sulfur dioxide emissions that are injurious to human health or the environment. Really a very complicated document specifically designed to compel Sunny Farms to obtain a PSD air permit and comply with the regulations and the intent of this document is to maintain public health with sulfur dioxide emissions. Really an important document and something we're in full compliance with. Um, we just recently submitted a plan to the EPA, uh, the Ohio EPA for their review, which is going to include raising our flares at the landfill. So the raising of those flares is going to make them more visible, but the offset of that is it's going to reduce the sulfur dioxide emissions at the reduce the impact of sulfur dioxide emissions at the facility that will reduce odors and it will further bring the site into NAICS compliance um, well don't get them too high you know we got people not not too happy about things being high in the, air. <laughs> More the, uh, the fast and fire department did mention that at this at, the, at our open house and so I think we need to engage with them on how we'll have warning systems or camera access so they can see the flare but that, that is something to consider um, uh, real quick, yeah, we do have, a, there is a sulfur dioxide meter that the Ohio EPA obtains just north of the facility, and there are plans in here where the EPA will install a sulfur dioxide meter uh, on site to monitor that. It, that's a uh, continuous? A continuous sulfur dioxide monitor. The one that's there now is not continuous, but there is a documents in here that, that uh, would allow for that when the state finally does it. Citing those meters is complicated. Um, I finally would leave you with that we are in full compliance with the consent order. It's heavily regulated. The county has added staff to continue to regulate Sunny Farms. The Ohio EPA uh, Air Board, Water Board, and uh, Solid Waste Board is actively involved in day-to-day -day review of the facility. Uh, I would point to where the facility was a year ago to where it is today. And uh, the, the story about the girl you mentioned is something we take to heart. Um, this weekend there were some orders on site. We reacted and installed an additional horizontal collector. Um, odors should be few and far between. It should not be intense and sustained and it should be the uh, not the norm. It should be an exception and not the norm and I, I believe that's where we are. It's borne out in the record and uh, I would I would just ask everyone again to think of how far set that facility's come in, in a year. Thank you. So let me ask a couple questions. The Ohio, Ohio Attorney General's document there are they putting you on a specific timeline? Yes. I mean, okay, there are specific dates in there. That's correct. And what, uh, within that document, are there penalties for not complying in those timelines? Yes, there are. There are stipulated penalties that increase. Are they monetary penalties or are they? Yes, they're monetary. Five per day, per month, they, they increase if a violation were to occur over time. There's a, I don't know if we have that, do we? I've not seen it. If you could if you let us copy that, I'd appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Refreshing to not have Ben here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we get to do it. Yeah, yeah. That's the best thing you said all day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Other public comments. Report from Adams Township. Wow. Well, uh, Congratulate you guys working together with the townships and going down and uh, with Bill Reinecke and uh, the other uh, representatives and uh, getting a bill uh, for, the, for the people of townships to have their voice for the uh, wind turbines. So thank you guys for collectively working with us on that. From the pharmacy board. Kent, Kent <laughs> uh, anything you'd like to add for the good of the, the order? Not at the time. <laughs> okay. Oh, good, thanks. All right. Uh, other public comments? I move that we go into executive sessions and talk about pending litigation. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Fishman? Yes. Yes. Uh, Vicki, we don't expect any action. Well, we might do so, though. But do you have some?